Jacket fans, I'm Courtney Keck with RamblinWreck.com, and today I'm talking to Georgia Tech outside linebacker Jeremiah Tauchu. Jeremiah, you are from Nigeria. Yes, ma'am. How old were you when you moved from uh, Nigeria? I moved here when I was eight years old. When you were eight years old? Yeah, that was 2001. How and when did you even decide to play football? It actually started uh, in middle school, passing for it, but I just could never play, and then I got to high school and I had a chance to play organized football, so I gave it a chance and it worked out pretty well. Reflecting back, what's been your favorite moment since you became a Yellow Jacket? Uh, I have, I've had a lot of favorite moments. Uh, I, I have to say my freshman year at North Carolina, it was really the uh, uh, first time I ever faced adversity in a game, and a game that I really was passionate about. So uh, we came out with the win. It wasn't the, the best of seasons, but the, that game was one that stuck with me a lot because it was the, for my first experience on the road and you know in a tough situation. And I made a play on kickoff for the team to help the team uh, eventually win the game. All right. You've been here two years now. Yeah, two and a half. What kinds of things do you want to accomplish this season, whether per, whether that's personal things or things on the field? Uh, I just want to be uh, somebody who younger guys can look up to and lead by example. I know I'm not young anymore, even though it seems like it was just yesterday I came in. So, I mean, I just definitely want to lead by example and help the younger guys, um, you know, help help the team win in, in – and everything they do. So that's basically what I wanted to give to the team this year. What, what advice would you give the new guys coming in? I'd definitely tell them to uh, stay in their books, first of all, uh, and listen to what your coach is saying. Just try to do everything you can 100 miles an hour. One thing that can be said about you is that you play with a lot of passion out on the field. Mm -hmm. Where does all that passion come from? Uh, it just comes from the energy of uh, being surrounded by uh, driven people, from coaches to your teammates to fans uh, who are very successful people. Uh, a lot of people that surround the program are successful and driven people, so you have to be driven and passionate about what you do. A lot of people people come to Georgia Tech because they're passionate about something. So basically, I feel like I'm, I'm taking the same passion to the football field to you know bring out what everybody else around in the community is passionate about. So that's basically where it comes from. You and I know Algro Pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Describe the relationship you have with him. Uh, Coach Grove, I mean, it's a great relationship, Coach, but my relationship with Coach Grove is the same relationship everybody has with him. I mean, he's an easy person to talk to. He never puts up a wall. You can come up to him with your problems, and, you know, he'll help you figure it out. If you're uh, struggling on defense, he really – he'll help you out with your game. I mean, he takes, he takes the initiative with everybody. So, I mean, my relationship with him is a close one. He's like a – I mean, almost like a second father, father figure. I mean, he. I mean, he looks out for everybody on his defense and the offensive guys. You know, he talks to you about how you're doing in school, how your family's doing. So he's a. I mean, he's just an overly generally uh, caring coach. What are some of the advantages of playing for a guy who has more than 35 years of coaching experience? Um, this is definitely um, a relief. Um, I mean, you don't have to worry about if your coach knows what he's talking about. I mean, he definitely knows what he's talking about. He's uh, he's been doing it for a while, so. I mean, that confidence in your coach just can allow you to do what he says and go do it full speed and play play at the highest level you can play at. Tell us your favorite Coach Grow story. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of stories, but uh, camp when camp comes around, it gets really hard to get through camp. And Coach Grow will always, uh, you know, bring back uh, something from so long ago. He'll bring, whether it's film from, like, when we were, before we were even born, We'll be watching that. He'll tell us a story about a certain player who wasn't talented enough, and he just kept working hard and working hard. I forgot the name, but – and then he finally uh, got better than everybody else. So, I mean, Coach Grove is full of stories. Uh, I can't really pinpoint one particular story. So, I mean, it's definitely great. All right. Um, only one starter returns from last year's defensive line. Yeah. Who has stepped up in the offseason to fill the – those roles? Uh, everybody, really. I mean, we expect everybody to step up. We all put pressure on each other as a team. There's no, uh, I mean, we're all, it's friendly competition. So we're all, uh, you know, encouraging each other, even if you're fighting for the same spot. I know the defensive line, they're very tight. So, and they're all working hard together. So uh, I'll say that they've all stepped up. Uh, Euclid Cummins, uh, Izon Cross, TJ Barnes, uh, Emmanuel D.A.K. They're all, they've all stepped up and they're all ready to take leadership role on this, leadership roles on this team uh, because they've all been here for a while. They've been here longer than I have. So, I mean, they're ready to, you know, to take, take the defensive line and, you know, have a good
good hold on what they're doing this year. Okay. With you being an outside linebacker in the 3-4. Yes, ma'am. Uh, explain the importance of having a very good defensive line. Uh, it's pretty important. They basically open everything up for you. Uh, you know, when I hang out with the defensive line there, I mean, they always, you know, try to look out for me because they, they always tell me, well, we do, I mean, we hold everything up for you, basically. You're the one running around doing everything, but, you know, we're really the unsung heroes. So every time I hang out with them, I kind of have to be nice to them and take care of them. But, I mean, it's very important. I mean, you, they have to be able to hold the point and, you know, free me up to take on other types of blocks that are not as hard as what they're taking on. So, I mean, but they're, they're going to do a good job this year. I really believe that. Okay. And last question, what are your expectations for the defense this season? Uh, it's the third year going into the defense. Uh, I expect it to be a lot better than the last couple. Of course, I mean, naturally, uh, we have a lot of guys coming back. Uh, as I think it's six, but a lot of guys who are going to be starting next year have already, you know, had starting roles at some point in their career. Uh, they have experience. Uh, the team is more – I think last year we were the second youngest team in the NCAA. So – uh, I think we can, I mean, we can build on that. Uh, we have a lot of young guys, but they're young with experience. We've been through a lot. We've been through bad seasons, good wins, bad losses. So, I mean, I feel like it's, it's time everything came together. All right. Great talking to you as always. You too, Corey. Thanks for your time, Jeremiah. No problem. And fans, make sure you visit ramblinrec.com for all things Georgia Tech football, including more player interviews as they prepare for the 2012 season.